Lord flows. Hukum, the essence of Nanak's message. In the process of enlightenment, realization of truth and living by that is the beginning. And the speck of ego and uh, egocentric desires, egocentric identities is the speck in the eyes that does not allow the truth to realize. For this, the two aspects, the nature of the egocentric identities and how one can overcome that. We are doers. This I have done and the, in doing the sense of I-ness remains. From doing, moving to being is the way. And hukum is the essence, is the way to live by the cosmic law. The day you understand that all that happens in life is because of the cosmic law or hukum, how can you reject sorrows and afflictions. You are not able to see the truth when leaves from the tree fall during autumn and tree becomes bare. It is not the end. This is the way of the tree. Each time autumn comes, old leaves fall and again new spring. And when spring comes, new leaves grow. Both sorrow and affliction happiness are two shores of the river of life. The river of life cannot flow without these two shores. The day you are beyond the duality of happiness and sorrow, bliss happens. When duality is no more, more oneness, only oneness remains. When duality is no more, oneness remains. Nothing is beyond this cosmic law that Nanak calls as hukum. Both happiness and sorrow are the outcome of hukum. It is the hukum that brings blessings to someone. It is because of hukum that someone remains within the cycle of birth and rebirth. And one who really understands this cosmic law or hukum is free from ego and attains to oneness which is another name for enlightenment. This is the essence of all religions and all an understanding of Buddhas. This is religiousness that does not come by going to the temples, churches, mosques, gurdwaras or chanting your scriptural injunctions. You can put on the garb of a religious one, but this cannot make you a religious reality. It happens many a times, realizing the futility of ego, you want to drop it. Yet still you cannot drop it because what can really be the cause of this? Ego gives you happiness. This alone is the problem. This is true as well. All suffering, misery and pain come because of ego. And when you feel pain, you want to drop the ego. And when ego brings happiness, you want to nourish and nurture ego. Both happiness and sorrow are two sides of the same coin. Both stay together and dissolve together as well. One moment you want to throw it and the very next moment you want to preserve. Ego is the sum total of all your actions and thinking. Ego and egocentric identities is nothing tangible. All that you have done knowingly or unknowingly accumulates to give birth to ego. Ego is the concept of all your doings. Ego is your dead past. From this very from the very beginning 
Nanak says, He alone is the only doer. Karta Puruk. He, the first three sutras, Karta Puruk, Nirbhav, fearless, Nirbhav, without any prejudice, Akal Murati, beyond time and space, Ajuni Sabhang, born out of his own free will. If you translate this into formless, so everything happens on its own. However, out of ignorance and negation of truth, <coughs> consider yourself a doer. The moment you consider yourself an instrument, ego dissolves. Can you really find a person who considers himself an instrument? And there is a vast majority of pseudo who claim them to be religious. No, they have no understanding of Nanak. Nanak says, it is because of hukum that one attains to grace. It is through hukum that one attains to deep understanding. It is through hukum that one is lost along the way. Nanak says, if you are a sinner, never consider yourself to be so. This is his way. You may consider this dangerous. This is really the essence of understanding. The moment you understand this, there will be no wrong. Your problem arises because you do not know the divine will. And if you do not know, you cannot live by this. This negation is the cause of your conflict and misery. Out of this arises sin. The negation creates the situation of self-suffering and pain to others. Considering yourself the doer is the veil of Maya or cool as Nanak calls it. And the realization of this is knowing or knowledge or gyan, ecstasy of Nanak. Nanak says, one who understands hukum, the, that everything moves according to cosmic law, is free of ego. Devotees sing his glory in many ways. However, none can really explain the magnanimity. How can you glorify the totality? Part can never glorify the total. All your scriptures are incomplete descriptions of that which is the cause of the entire existence. He is unsayable. Sun is shining. An artist paints the sun. It may be beautiful, but in no way it can give light. The poet sings the glory of the rising sun or compose beautiful poems of moon, etc. All these may touch your heart, may create ripples in your heart. Certainly, all these cannot bring light into your inner darkness. All songs, narrations, etc. are all incomplete. When you are really thirsty, the word water cannot quench you. If you are not thirsty, then the world water will do. So when you are really thirsty, then you will search that which is existential. The moment you are filled with gratitude, prayer springs forth from deep within. The day your prayer will be the expression of your gratitude, not demands. You have only known gratitude for small things. Your handkerchief falls, someone picks and gives it to you. You give or gives you a cup of tea. You are thankful. 
in all cases you are thankful for such trivial things and you never feel gratitude towards God who keeps on giving you grace every moment. In your religious places you visit to get the wishes fulfilled. Never for a moment have you paused to express your gratitude for all that you are. Nanak says, religious person is one who is thankful for even small things. And whatever you have, you have, do not deserve really. You always get more than what you deserve. Such the nature, such is the nature of his bounties. You have been enjoying the fruits of fruits of grace for years and yet still these never come to exhaust. Nanak says that Hukmi, the custodian of the cosmic law, governs entire cosmos and the creation by an infallible law that is he calls it as Hukum. This creation is run not by your whims and pleasure, instead by an infallible law. He is constantly sending you the messages, but you go on ignoring out of your intelligence. You claim yourself to be religious. In reality, you are not. You can be religious only if you understand Hukum Nanak says. And then Nanak spent four sutras on mind. Manne ki gati kahi na jai, the speed, the way, the process of mind, nothing can be said about it. Jeko kahe piche pachtai, whosoever talks about it has to repent afterwards. There is nothing no pen, no paper to write anything, yet still mind goes on recording. Manne ka vahi karan vichar. The, this, the way the mind records everything needs to be introspected. This is very important. Four sutras are dedicated to the mind and its attributes. Then he focuses attention on art of listening. We hear many sounds go, but you do not really listen. If you listen one single teaching of the Master, Je Guru, je guru Ki Ek Sik Suni, one who has learned, one who has understood one single message of the Master, his life is transformed and he pays attention to the art of asks you to focus on the process of listening and many sutras are dedicated for that. Je Guru ki ek sik suni and what is that sik? Sabna jiya ka ek data sumai bisrna jai is the master of the entire creation. This I may never Ever forget. You are listening to me, but you are not really listening. You are listening to your own inner dialogue that is going on based on what I am saying. If you really listen to one single sentence, one single word, life will transform. Enough for now.